People often take their survival gear and guns very seriously, and looking around, it's no wonder why. Elon Musk just sounded his annual warning about artificial intelligence destroying humanity, Russia is conducting nuclear drills, and the RTX 4090s are smoking like your Aunt Esther on her anniversary. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay like a pirate on shore leave in Thailand, we've decided to double up on our protection and revisit your SHTF guns. So sit back, try to remember where you buried those gold doubloons, and let's start the show. Remember, when planning for a shit hits the fan situation, check out DirkandTactical.com for the parts and accessories you need to build an AR-15 at prices that won't break the bank. Thanks to our sponsor, Dirk and Tactical, your AR-15 Superstore. You can find out more at DirkandTactical.com. First up, we have the Kami Conscript issued AK-47. This AK was rusty from the day it was issued from the factory and has been passed on from collector to collector, none of whom have ever bothered to clean the rust, excuse me, patina off of it for fear of making this rifle worth less than the zero rubles it's valued at. It rattles more than a tambourine in the hands of a toddler after their fifth pixie stick and nevertheless you claim it's the ultimate shit hits the fan weapon because of its reputation for functioning in adverse conditions. You wouldn't really know because you only made it to the range once after you caught a Brandon Herrera video and remembered you even owned an AK. You spent the day getting a perfect 36 yard zero, shooting from a bench and trying to impress the coven of fuds who haunt your local range. Your version of an SHTF situation is a Red Dawn scenario where the Russians, actually no, check that, they're a little busy right now. Uh, how about the Chinese? No, Hollywood's gonna get pissed off at that one. Uh, you guys good with the North Koreans? Oh, hello, great to see you again, Hans. Okay, North Koreans. Well, the North Koreans parachute into the parking lot of a local Chick-fil-A and attempt to seize the means of biscuit production. Spicy chicken biscuits is what you're gonna scream with your rifle overhead as you valiantly defend the drive-thru. But what you'll find is that a straight from the factory weight is much more than you actually trained for. Those 12 ounce curls, they just didn't cut it. And you've only purchased a couple of magazines because you're convinced you can go full gorilla and scrounge them from defeated enemies. You've also ordered some of that totally legit Russian body armor with Spetsnaz handwritten on the back for a proper LARP setup. But you failed to realize that the average Russian soldier is a conscripted farmer who carries a cow on its back and drinks vodka for breakfast. They don't mind the weight, but you will. I, 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 I'd like to get... It's, we're stuck. Uh, you, know, you know what? Maybe, maybe everyone should sit down. The most weight you've ever carried is the guilt of using wall hacks against 12 year olds to dominate nerds in Call of Duty. Also, your gamer tag is JED69420. Now, if you heed my warnings and want something better to protect your keep you alive bits, make sure to check out our second sponsor for today's video Spartan Armor Systems. This video is sponsored by Spartan Armor Systems, makers of high-grade American-made body armor located in sunny Tucson, Arizona. From soft armor, composite, ceramic, and steel plate options, they've got a solution to your armor needs. You can find out more at SpartanArmorSystems.com. The next person on this list has chosen to go with a Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum or a just as good Taurus knockoff. You bought into all the rhetoric about wheel guns not jamming and any pistol designed after 1910 with a magazine being just a fad. You'll never be dissuaded that stopping power is not a real thing and you're the elite among the fishing vest and trucker hat crowd. Nobody likes you. You'll be standing tall on your pallet of dehydrated fruit cups, drinking a hot cup of Sanka while all those youngsters who think they're newfangled 1911s are gonna work against the zombie horde come calling for your protection. What did I say? I'm not gloating, but what did I say? Did I not say? Unfortunately for you, there are no tap and rack drills for revolvers and that first catastrophic malfunction will have you frantically trying to access the medical videos that ARFCOM's been making. There is no cell phone service in the apocalypse, bud, so you better start watching them now. You carry your nickel-plated six-inch revolver in a crotchet and tub signature series Miami Vice holster just so you can easily access that Jack Link's jerky you stow in your lint-filled front pocket. 
we will give you credit, you do get some range time performing fairly well at your local pin shoots, and the missus doesn't mind it because it gives her more one-on-one -on -one time with her personal trainer, Colton. Uh -huh. You must need a hug. There's no time to think about that anyways. You've got a stationary target to dominate. You've never shot at a moving target in your entire life, and you lack the patience for hunting. Don't most people know you can get most of your prepackaged meats from Costco anyways? You've seen Jerry Mitchell -like reload revolvers faster than most people can get a shot off, and if some old guy can do it that fast, then you're going to have no problem. When people try to talk you out of a revolver as a shit hits the fan gun, you just retreat back to your home and start watching a Walking Dead marathon. If a revolver was good enough for Rick Grimes carrying through the Walking Dead series, then it must be good enough for you. You're still seeking the correct share of Stetson to complete the look of a total badass while practicing how to say CORAL in just the right twang. Ah, the 22 long rifle shit hits the fan setup. It's refreshing to meet an optimistic apocalypse prepper, especially one of you who chooses the 22 long rifle pistol over a 22 long rifle rifle, I guess. In this case, it's the Browning Buckmark. How do I know that? Because you're so old, your birthday candles cost more than your cake. I'm confused. With your buck mark, your idea is to hunt small game and avoid firefights. That's freaking genius! Why doesn't everyone do the same thing? Avoid big game and avoid firefights. Truthfully, I could eat a bowl of alphabet soup and poop out a better plan than carrying a tiny caliber during the end of the world. Forget the apocalypse and start selling your squirrel and varmint high protein diet plan online right now. Use the money that you make to pay somebody to come up with a better plan. Even though manufacturing has come a long way, rimfire is still not as reliable due to the primer being embedded in, you know, the rim. What did you just say? Your firing pin slamming into a tiny part of that one bad round will make you just another loot drop for the Giga Chads that are prospering. While you may not survive long when shit hits the fan, you will be remembered for having the best tasting smoked squirrel loot that has ever been taken, and we thank you for that. Thank you, dickheads! Come tell me your squirrel smoking secrets over on Twitch where I stream video games each and every single day and host a Saturday night gun theme special, Tundra Nation Live, where we talk about firearms and play an interactive gun related game. If you grew up in the 1970s reading Soldier of Fortune magazine, we already know what your weapon of choice is. Boring! The right arm of the free world, the FNFAL. You spent countless hours poring over page after page of Soldier of Fortune and were convinced at a very young age of the prowess of this particular firearm. With all the amazing articles of Soldier of Fortune magazine, like the ones we discussed in this video right here, how could they possibly lead you wrong? You're ready for any shit hits the fan scenario with your underwater knife fighting techniques and the ability to body those street toughs with a jaunty cane. You're prepared for the eventual end of civilization and plan on surviving on Vienna sausages and spam. And that's pretty convenient given that's all you eat now. You actually have multiple FALs because you've traded away every other firearm that you own. You scoff at the newer FALs that have come out in recent years because they got it right the first time and you have zero desire to attach anything to your rifle ever. Your biggest hope is that when shit hits the fan, those guys you sent your name and address to via a Sri Lankan PO box years ago for contractor work finally get back to you. Guess what, buddy? Those were actually feds, and that's why your landline has that clicking sound during every call. Big oof for OPSEC, but it's too late now. Well, shit. You're pretty handy with tools since you've been modifying that rattle can flat black pickup truck for the last 30 years and have even managed to get it started on occasion. In your will, you've asked to be buried in it, a wish your family will absolutely ignore when they get an offer of $100 from the local scrapyard. They will, however, forget about your burnt urn and ashes that rolled under the seat and racked with guilt, they'll visit your grave at Joe's local pick and pull to pay their respects. A newcomer to the SHDF world in recent years is the Mossberg 590 Shockwave, a 12 gauge shotgun without a stock because like President Joe says, you can just rack it and blast them. 
Sure. It's not like you can shoot accurately with it shouldered anyways, so the rational move is to save weight. I mean, even a broken clock's right twice a day, huh? Just know this, you are a conversation starter. Just not when you're there. Your band of wasteland marauders are laughing at you and not with you. I don't have the patience or crayons to explain this to you, but you are not stopping anybody. And I doubt your shockwave has even been loaded since you fired it that one time with a limp wrist and ended up taking a hot barrel to the face. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Finally, tell me you grew up in the 80s without telling me you actually grew up in the 80s by showing me your mini 14 shit hits the fan setup. No doubt you'll love it when a plan comes together and the A-Team theme song is your ringtone, your text alert, and your doorbell. The mini 14 is the perfect shit hits the fan rifle for 80s kids because just like them, it's stuck between two eras. You want all the accuracy of the 223 and 556 rifle, but you want the wood aesthetic of an M1 carbine. You wish more people would buy American as you drive your Toyota Tundra to the rifle range. None of this makes sense! You're friends with both modern shooters rocking their ARs and the fishing vest crowd, but never seem to get invited out for beers after range days because both groups can tell that you're not really one of them. But that's okay because you gotta spend your free time getting the rest of the wood paneling set up in your basement. You've thought about buying a modern version of the Mini 14 with a lighter polymer stock, but that really just seems too close to owning an AR. And what are you gonna do with all that wood varnish? Nope. Better just pop in that VHS tape with your favorite Knight Rider episode and peruse the listing for Trans Ams in your local Auto Trader magazine. You'll never buy one, but those Fieras you keep seeing seem just as good. If you've made it this far, then you are the most blessed of Tundra Nation fans, Mwah! and no doubt will prosper as the king of barter town in the apocalypse. Throw a dollar sign down in the comment section below to flaunt your wasteland wealth and secure your elite status among us. Give the video a thumbs up if it made you chuckle, hit that sub button and check out our buddies over at ARFCOM, and don't forget to join us next time when we still don't know what the fuck we're doing. Bye.